Hey, hey, everybody. This is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and Me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram. Today, I wanted to try and use up a kit that I have had in my stash forever and a day. Um, it is the Reflections Fall Kit by Lori Whitlock, and it is from Echo Park Paper. And I've had this forever, like I said. Uh, <laughs> 2013 is the year on it. And since it is fall, and since I really don't need any more paper, let's try and use up what we have here in this kit. That will be so wonderful, in my opinion. To get a kit all used up. I think they used to call this kill a kit, but instead of making scrapbook layouts, we're going to make embellishments for our journals. So let's just see what all we can get made out of this kit. Now this is the glossy print paper that just shows you like a um, synopsis of what is in the actual kit and I will probably be using a little bit of that just because it's pretty it is glossy but it will work so I have left in this kit you probably saw in the stickers I've used a couple of stickers but then on this one I've not used any stickers off of this sheet here Okay, and then from the papers, I have the um, acorns with the little swirlies and then the, that beautiful mustardy color. That looks like old um, like drapery curtains. So I have two sheets of that and then this really dark espresso color with some more vines and acorns on it and then a chevron pattern on the other side so two sheets of that and then I have polka dots and look at that it's got those great um, book page circles in there too and on the back is just a really dark espresso color with some pumpkins two sheets of that I have one sheet of this diagonal stripe and then on the back of that is some looks like maybe sunflowers or something like that but kind of in a dark burnt orange so one sheet of that and then it looks like oh no here's the other one to that one so I have this uh, nice mustardy uh, gray plaid and then on the back is more of that espresso kind of color they went really heavy with this espresso stuff in this collection with uh, some flowers some florals on that so two sheets of that and then I actually have both sheets of the cut aparts so that's all the cut aparts I have my camera really high but we're still unable to put the entire 12 by 12 sheet in there but not to worry because we're going to be cutting down all of this stuff so i know that um some people especially if they never did 12 by 12 scrapbooking to some people 12 by 12 papers are overwhelming and i get that so i'm just trying to show you that this can be used up and made smaller for your journals and then you don't have to be so overwhelmed so i'm going to start with my favorite part of the entire scrapbooking kit anyway and that is the cut apart sheets and i didn't get that branding strip cut off quite enough so let's go back and do just a t90 little bitty cut in there and let's get these cut aparts cut apart So 
so I have all the pieces cut down. So I have two of those and then two of this, two of this one, okay, and then two turkeys, two of the thankful for this beautiful life, and then I have one of each of these because I left two of them from that that I'm going to, let me see, get my bone folder wherever I have laid that here. Okay, and I am going to make two little booklets or something out of these. So I'm just folding that over and creasing it down the middle. I'm doing it on both of these. So instead of cutting the um, three by four cards out, I just left them together and then you have this little booklet and see journaling on this side, this side, journaling on this side, and then whatever you add to the middle. So there's us two little booklets there. So you don't have to cut out um, every piece individually. And this one I thought that was very cute to um, put in a pocket of a journal. And you've got um, that where you can list things to do during your fall festivities. All right, so I'm just going to lay those aside and go to my next page that I want to cut down. And next I would go in and see if there is a particular um, page sheet that I want to cut down to make tags out of. And I believe this one is one that I would like to make a sheet of tags out of. So I'm gonna put these over to the side and we'll come back and do more stuff to that. We're just getting all of our um, bases cut for things that we're gonna make with this kit. Okay, so I'm taking that branding strip off 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock, and we are going to cut these tags three inches. So I'm just lining it up at the three inch mark and then going over and lining it up again, cutting it again at three inches. Okay, so that means if we have a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock, that we will get four strips out of it. And then um, we've got another 12 by 12. I don't want to cut again at three because that would give us squares. So I'm thinking, okay, let's just make it easy and cut all of these at six. So that gives us um, a taller tag and we're gonna cut these. And then on the backs, we can use um, white uh, gel pen and write on this these backs. We don't even have to add anything to the backs to journal on them. So let's go ahead and cut the rest of these down. We've got all of those cut. And then I have the um, tag angle corner punch from um, We Are Memory Keepers. If you don't have that, I've seen plenty of uh, YouTubers that use a um, credit card, an old card of some kind or a store card, and they cut a slice off of the corner and just line it up and you would cut with scissors and then you just flip it over and you cut again on the other side, cut with scissors. But I do have the angle punch, so that makes it a little easier for me. And I'm just going to go through here using the large angle and trim off my corners there. So there's one. And we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven 
more to go. Okay, and since there are um, so many circles on these, instead of doing my crop it all to make the circle at the top for whatever I'm going to put in it, I'm going to use my little slot punch. And I'm going to use my T-square ruler, just line it up at the top, and um, I will center it up once I get the slot punch on there. And I just want to go down, let's see, at about the three eighths. At about the three eighths mark. That's how far we're going to go down. I'm not too particular on getting it really, really precise, but I do want them to be as um, even as possible as far as matching up. Okay, so I'm doing three of those. I'm not going to go through and um, mark every one of them because my slot punch should go through three pieces of cardstock pretty easily. So I'm going to line this up middle ways and use my mark there. That is pretty close. I love these little well tail punches because they do give you quite a bit of leverage to get that punched out. So yep, there's three all done same way. Okay, and then we've got these three and that'll pretty much even us up so we don't have to go through and hold on <laughs> so we don't have to go through and um, mark every one of them and then we have our last two here okay and then you will see they're all lined up and all of my slots are pretty much lined up so that was pretty easy I want to use walnut stain and I'm just going to ink around all of my edges and then I'm really not going to worry about that back side just because it's such a dark color but whatever kit that you are using if it is a lighter color back then you will probably want to ink the back also I think I will ink around that just um, because it does have a little bit of um, fraying there on the edge and it had some white core in it so just kind of dirty that up and then I will do that to all of these and be right back there are those eight tags all done as far as the inking goes and the slots punched in the tops and we could do whatever we would like to them we can add lace to the slot and go through one side if my fingers will cooperate we will go through one side and then pull through make a library knot with that lace there. Oh, I like it when it goes the other way, so let's do that. Let's go loose ends forward and then the loop behind and then pull through that way. It gives that little, I don't know, it's just a more finished look to it to me when you pull it through that way. So I'm just going to Pull on both sides, and that gives us a little topper there for one of the tags. Let me move this over, and then we could dress it up even more with some of the stickers, or once you start cutting out more paper and you get scraps, um, you could add the scraps of paper there too. So let's see what this little card stock sticker would look like. I like that. Just kind of rough it up a little bit. Add some inking around the edge and on top. So you add that little sticker there to the 
front and then on the back a little so grateful sticker that you could add and then like I said use a um, white gel pen and do your journaling on the back there so that's just one way to dress up one of those little tags that you have made and these are three inches wide by six inches tall so there is another idea to kill a kit and um, I know that phrase used to be used a lot years ago and uh, not so much nowadays but um, I love the idea of using up what you already have I'm gonna go ahead with this glossy sheet here and cut this I'll save that bottom for later. I might use it in something else. So if we cut our little strips that are at the top of this, we can use these little strips on something a little later. I just love having especially the same color theme of um, pieces and parts laying around and um, maybe organizing them together, putting them in a folio so that um, you can use them later in something because you've got it all together from the one collection and everything matches. So you could just add all of this to one junk journal that would be very pretty. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna cut these a little shorter because we've got that title in the bottom of that. So cutting those down a little bit more. Okay, you've got these strips to add somewhere and they have almost like a magazine sheen and feel to them. So there's you some little strips to use. We will try to use those later with something. Um, with this one, I want to try and make library pockets and I want this to be the outside of them. I'm going to cut my branding strip off. And then let's see here. I think I want to make these library pockets. Let's go four inches wide. So four. Four, and that means you've got another four here because you have 12 by 12, okay? And then, since it's not really directional, I mean, I know you've got florals on the other side, so you can do it however you would like, but I'm thinking, and I'm gonna use my mat here as a little guide on where to fold it down. So it's 12 inches long, and I'm thinking I want to come down one, two, three, four inches and fold right at the, yep, right at four inches fold down. We're almost there. Not quite, but almost. Okay, and then, then I'm going to go two and a half down. So you can easily use a scoreboard for this and it would probably be even easier. I'll do the next one with a scoreboard. But this is just showing you even if you don't have a scoreboard, you can still make these little pockets. Now, I need to straighten that fold up. I can tell that it is not straight at all. And then fold this up. Okay. So then you've come down far enough here that when you make your little circle thumb hold, you know, you're still just going to see your plaid paper. You're not going to have to see that brown in the background. Now, if you like the background paper just as much as you like the front paper, no problems at all. And, of course, if your OCD does not let you um, use plaid paper like this and it not perfectly line up, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> this is not perfectly lined up, so we uh, will work with what we've got. Like I said, if you like the background paper, then you could trim this off and have another uh, scrap piece to use on another project that you use in your kit use up. Now I like to color on my folds. It just gives that nice finished look to it. And then really distress ink those edges really good. Okay, and then I will turn it over because I don't know right now if I will glue this down and put it in my journal or if I will put this just down in a pocket. So I'm just going to go ahead and ink that back just so that it's done and later on I can do whatever I want to with it as far as um, finishing it off. I'm going to get my 1 8 inch score tape. Uh, first off I'm going to get the liquid glue and I'm going to just glue down this flap okay and then I'm going to get my 1 8 inch score tape and I'm going to, I'm going to put it down just the two edges there you don't have to put it here because you've got a fold up so no worries with that. And then get my little prick or pickup tool. And then you've got that glued down, that top flap glued down, and then you're just going to fold up and then burnish those. So there's our first little library pocket. And I'm going to put this tree over here. I'm going to ink it up just a little bit and we're going to cut off the bottom of that trunk so it doesn't cover up everything. Oh, I almost got it all on there, didn't I? Alright, sticky scissors. And just barely trim off the bottom of that. And then I think maybe one of these little words will look sweet at the bottom here with it. I think I will trim this straight on instead of it having the little arrow shape. I say I will trim it straight on, you know. Cutting in a straight line is not my best quality and just ink around that a little bit and then get that put on there all right so there is a um, library pocket and that does fit down in there it's a little taller than that one um, than the pocket is but I like the look of that I like how that looks so that is cute embellishment for our journals there and let's go ahead and um, fold down these other two and we can get them set And these are a really good size. They're four by five and a half. So these would fit in most all um, of your junk journals, especially if they are um, the half sheet. Okay, so I am going to do my first score line at, um, what did we say, four? Okay, I'm gonna do my first score line at four. And then the other score line I messed up and I'm 
done a score line where I shouldn't have done one. Uh, and then the next one, I'm going to come down on the opposite end of my scoreboard and come one, two, and a half. Okay, so score at four and then score at nine and a half. Okay, and fold up and then fold down. Okay, <laughs> and I've got that messed up line in the back, but if I put this into a journal and glue that down, you'll never ever know. You wouldn't have known if I wouldn't have told you. Okay, and then do my little punch out there, and I'm using a one and a half inch circle punch for that and then ink my edges all right and then glue down that top flap just like we did on the other one And the 1 8 inch score tape on the bottom flap just along the two edges up to that fold line. That one folded up a lot better and almost <laughs> on the line so it lines up. Um, and we could use one of our strips that we cut off of that front we could line up a few of those and then just get whichever one that you want showing the most on top and then trim off your excess and then you could put if you wanted to be a little extra <laughs> you could put just some eighth inch score tape at the bottom of each one of these okay and get my liquid glue and just put a little there and there and wherever I want to start this and line it up as straight as possible Okay, and then maybe a little sticker at the bottom here. Nothing too fancy. I'll wipe off my scoreboard. I got a little glue on it. And then, see, you could use these little pieces as tuck spaces for small ephemera. Isn't that cute? I love that. And then, of course, you still have your pocket at the top there too. Okay, so that's two ways to dress up your little library pockets that you've made from the one of the 12 by 12 sheets. And then I will go ahead and um, assemble this one. And I come up a little bit higher on this one just to change it up a tad. So I just come up to the four and a half inch mark. So for my fold down, I will just need to do two inches. Okay, so I did this one four and a half at the four and a half mark and then at the 10 inch mark. That's how I did that one. And let's do our little punch out, ink it up. I think I will 
around my corners too. So when I do this one at the top, I'm gonna fold that down then I've got that there and there and we've got a rounded edge okay so this one is a taller pocket at the top so it's gonna hold a taller piece so it still holds that it just covers it up a little bit more and I've rounded the corners on this one and then you also have more room to decorate so see it's the same height but you just got a taller pocket front so you've got more room to decorate and you could even add a piece down here and make a double pocket so let's see if one of those cut apart sheets little cut apart see look at that so I'm just going to barely do a little notch there. And I'm going to round these top two corners and leave the bottom as is. Okay, so I didn't go all the way down on this piece because I like the look of having that at the bottom but then you have a pocket here and a pocket here so you could add all kinds of little stuff down in here and then add your tag at the top too so you've got all kinds of options for these library pocket pieces that you've made from your 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. And then of course all of these can be used as journaling cards in your um, junk journals. You could add them into all of your pockets that um, you have in junk journals because everybody uses lots and lots of pockets so you know you could put pockets everywhere in your journal and use these cut aparts in those and then we have these that we left together so it's got a nice look on the back on the front so for that I like to get a piece of the paper in the kit that I'm not too super duper crazy about. I'm gonna move my scoreboard here and get my trimmer. So see, this is a little loud for my taste, this right here. So I would use this as little pockets and things. So um, on a smaller scale, this print might not be as loud. <laughs> so if I have a three by four card so this is three inches so if I made this make the pocket piece two and seven eighths wide by two inches tall so I'll need four of these so I'm going to get that centered up there I don't want to go all the way to the edge with my pockets because if you do, then you're going to go over that fold line and then you're not going to be able to close it up. So if um, designs make you kind of crazy as far as that goes, you could do one in one color and one in the other pattern or one in one pattern, one in the other pattern. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this pattern on one side the floral on the other side and then just get them centered up I know it's hard to see I'm gonna ink this middle line so you'll be able to see it a little bit better okay oh yeah that helps us out quite a bit so I'm just gonna center it up like this I don't like going all the way to the edge on my little things like this because it just makes it too bulky and then you're not able to close it up well all that so that's why I made mine 
two and seven eighths instead of going all the way to three inches. I just didn't want to bulk it up too much. So there's our little pockets. Let's go ahead. We can line them up together and do our little notch. And I'm just gonna make two little shallow notches and then I'm gonna ink my edges. And then I'm just going to put some liquid glue around the three sides and center them up and put them in. I'm not gonna worry with um, score tape on this tiny little project. So I'm just putting it in with glue. And of course I got too much glue in there, but it's okay. Just make sure that it is all the way down on all three sides and then wipe away your excess glue, and then get this one ready to go in. And I try not to get too much glue, but mine usually always does it anyway. And that is where you can use those nudgers, those little squares that we had in this pack, and I was, talking to y'all and going, okay, what is a nudger? Why are these little squares in here? And I got my answer. So if you've got a glue line that is just not what you are wanting, you get that little nudger. And I'm going to start calling them nudgers because that's exactly what you do. You nudge that glue over to where you want it and look at that. It put it precisely at the edge. So, I love my little nudgers. That is what I'm calling them. Because <laughs> that's what they do. They nudge that glue line over to where you really wanted it. And it um, kind of uh, takes care of that human error that we all tend to have when it comes to paper crafting. All right, I'm going to ink my edges just because I think that gives it that finished look. And then I'm going to ink all around on the inside also. So there is our little pocket booklet that we can use in our journals and add all kinds of little things down in that. I've got some straw paper over here. Add all kinds of little embellishments or, or something like that, you know. Just a little something, a little pretty to make. And um, here is that other one. We can make that one too. So right now we have all of our cut apart. So I know what you're thinking. Uh, that's just cut apart. You just cut those apart. Those are nothing. You didn't really make those. Well, I know I didn't make them, but we can still use journaling cards in our journals. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All right, so there's thirteen journaling cards to add to our journals. There is one, two, three library pockets to add to our journals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tags to add to our journals. And then we have those two three by four cards that we left together and made the little pocket booklets out of. So there's that and here's this one of course I don't have those pockets in there yet but there are those so we've got 13 14 15 16 17 18 and then eight more that's 26 items that we have made so far to go in our journals and of course you could also use these in scrapbook pages too but I'm just into right now making things for my junk journals and that's 26 items and then we also have these strips right here cut let's make some tucks out of this one sheet I have two sheets of this but let's make some tucks with this 
and um, let's see, a regular half sheet um, junk journal. They are eight and a half. So let's make some eight and a half inch long tucks. So I want that to be at the top of one of them. <clears throat> So I want to cut these, cut the bottom off of this 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock. Okay, and then I want to cut my tucks at two inches. So two inches by eight and a half inches. So there's one. And two, and we could also use that side. I love that mustard color. Very pretty. Three. Four. And then I really don't want to cut that down because if I cut that at two, we are cutting right in the middle of that acorn piece. So I want to leave that one as is. And you can ink them up and then add your little um, punched piece out here. So if you go about middle ways, add that. And then in your journal, you would add this to the side here like this okay and just imagine we're already inked all around and then you're going to glue on the three sides and you've got yourself a tuck right there on your page edge and this one would just be a wide page edge and i would i mean tuck <laughs> on your page edge you would cover up most of your page but i would do a really deep I would do a really deep thumb hole like that. And then that gives you a little bit more room. And I keep reaching up. I might as well just leave the journal down here. If you put it on this side, you could even add a hinge to the back of it and let it fold out like that. And you could still journal in there or just put it in as a tuck and you could put some wide stuff and hide some secret journaling or something if you wanted to back behind there so that is very cute I love those so yeah and I know somebody is going to comment yeah you just cut down a bunch of paper into strips and you call them tucks mm -hmm. yep it's my video I can do that if I want to um so there are <laughs> there are some tucks cut two okay i want to make a little banner out of this piece that we didn't cut down as a pocket so i'm just going to give myself a little bit of a crease there so that maybe my sides stay together and i'm just going to cut from the loose ends up and make a very wide banner and we could put some kind of flower on the top here those flowers that we made those are so cute let's do see like this one you could add that flower and a little word label and add that to the top of one of your um, journal pages very cute after that's inked up love that i love this mustard colored paper so much i'm going to make another library pocket out of this and i'm not measuring i'm just folding it over making sure I've got enough room when I fold it over to not see the paper on the other side, even though that was pretty paper. 
Oh, I like that one. That one's very pretty. And then once you ink the edges, I think that's going to be even prettier. Okay, there's another library pocket that I made from another strip of the 12 by 12 paper. And I was going to say, even if the um, kits that you are using, even if they don't have um, cut apart pieces for you to make, um, have ready-made journal cards, you could always cut down your own. Say you have a sheet of paper that you really like the look of and you think you can dress it up really well, you can cut it up into um, your own cut apart sheets. So let's just do four, four by six cards. So there's a four and then there is a four. Okay, and then cut at six, and then cut at six again. Okay, so you've got four, four by six cards, and then this last strip that's left is um, four by 12. So then you're gonna cut this one at three inches all the way across. So three, three, and three. So then there out of that 12 by 12 cardstock, you have four three by four cards and four four by six cards out of that 12 by 12 sheet. And you can dress these up really easily by just inking the edges, adding a sticker from the sticker sheets that come in the kit. And then on the back, either you could write with a white uh, jelly pen, a gel pen, or you could add some coffee dyed paper, some old book page to the back of it, and you could dress that up any way you would like. That is a cute little journal card to add to your junk journals. So we still have, that's another sticker sheet. So we still have one, two, three, four more sheets in this kit, and then this partial sheet here also. Okay, with this one, what we have left out of it, this is 12 inches by nine inches. So I'm gonna get my score pal out, and on the nine inch side, I'm going to score at six. Okay. And I'm going to fold up And then I'm going to score at six again. I'm, this is a little bit long, so I'm just going to cut off just a like sixteenth of an inch here. It is a little bit long, like it got cut wrong somewhere along the way. And then I'm going to score again at six. So on the nine inch side, we scored at six. And then the 12 inch side, we scored at six. So we're going to fold up and then we're going to fold over. And it is um, some stiff cardstock. So what we're going to do to kind of break down that bulk is we're going to come in right here where this fold is on the bottom. Can you tell what I'm about to do? I'm gonna go on either side. I'm gonna ink that for you so you can see it. Let's ink this bottom line here. Okay, so that's the side that's coming up. 
on either side of that score line all the way to that fold, I'm going to cut out some bulk. Just going to go on one side of that fold, just straight down, following that fold line, all the way to the other fold. And then I'm going to come on the other side where I've inked it and just come straight down again to that other fold line. And then I'm just going to, there's that one little strip, and then I'm just gonna snip it off there at the fold line. And that gets rid of that bulk that's in the middle, so when you fold it over, you don't have that bulk. Oh, that feels so much better. It lays so much better down in there. So, as you can tell, this is going to be a little journal or folio or whatever you would like to use it for. I'm going to fold these two together, and I'm going to get my little notch cut out, and when you fold them together like this, you get the notch at the same place on both sides. So see, there's that little notch. Look how wild that paper is. But with lots of ephemera goodies down in here, it would cover up a lot of that. I'm going to round my corners on the outside here. So I'm going to go ahead and round that bottom where the pockets are. Round that top. Open it up. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay, let's go ahead and round our pocket corners too. Now this, if you went ahead and finished it, decorated it up, added some maybe some teas of some kind, or um, uh, a couple of cards, greeting cards, something like that, and you could use this as snail mail also. You wouldn't even have to add it to a journal if you didn't want to. You could just use it as a snail mail care package. I love making these. These are one of my favorite things to make ever, and I'm just going to Let's go ahead and glue these pockets up. And there's our little pockets down in that. And your finished product, of course, is six inches wide. So it's a six by six piece here because we scored at six and then we scored at six again. So we come out with a six by six piece. And you could add one of these four by six cards on the outside here as decoration. I think I will go ahead and do that. I like that. Let's ink the edges of this. I'm going to ink the edges of that and add my four by six card there. You could have made that a pocket too if you wanted to. I just went ahead and glued it down there. And then maybe um, a small sticker or something on the outside here. Maybe this little pumpkin piece. I like that. Cute. So there's a little decoration to the outside. You're using up one of your cut aparts on the outside of that folio. And then you've got plenty of room to decorate here too and add lots and lots of things to those pockets. So I think I am going to stop there. I still have one, two, three, four pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock. And I think I'll just make a couple of you know, more things like I have here, maybe some more tags and some more little pockets. And then I've got plenty of stickers to add into my pages and things into my journal. So I'm thinking, be watching for a um, completed journal using all of this. And I may just have it up for sale at the shop, scrapbookingwithme.com. So um, be watching for that. You, you might see it there. You know, just a fun way to use up some um, pieces 
and parts that you have left over from a kit or use up 12 by 12 paper that you have in a kit this is a great way to do that so i appreciate y'all watching and um seeing what i was doing today because y'all know i like to just share what i am making at the time so i just turn the camera on and talk to y'all while i'm making my stuff here's some stuff that wasn't even in that okay there's that a little turkey the little tag that pretty much completed then our little um then our library pockets our little folio our tucks that we went ahead and um notched a couple of them just to show you how easy making tucks are and then of course we have all of our paper we still have left over and our little strips that we cut out from the front of the collection. I will have you some still shots at the end to get you some up close detail on some of these little projects that we've made. And I will, of course, have pictures on Instagram also. So if you're not following me on Instagram, uh, me, Crafty Scrapper on Instagram the Melina pilot Instagram that is my personal uh, Instagram and where we share some of our singing stuff so uh, if you want to follow me there you can but my crafty Instagram is me crafty scrapper so thanks so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this trying to use up an old 12 by 12 uh, collection kit from Echo Park and y'all have a great day. I will see you in the next video. God bless. Bye, y'all.